getting started? Good evening. I'm Dan Corbin. I was elected mayor almost two years ago in May of 2012. It's been a real honor and privilege to serve you during that period of time. This is my third town hall meeting and State of the City address. The first one was in January of 2013. The second one was in August of 2013. And this will be my last one. Two and a half years ago when I decided to run for mayor, I made a solemn promise to my wife that I would only serve one term on the council and she's holding me to that promise. So if you've wondered why I'm not running for re-election, that's the reason. Uh, but I surely enjoyed uh, serving you in this position over the last two years. And this is an opportunity for me to kind of recap where we've been and where I think we need to be going uh, in the future. Let's start off by looking at Vision 2030. In, in uh, December of 2007, the Clean City Council adopted this vision for our future. It was, uh, it was quite a process to develop uh, these particular goals. Uh, there were stakeholders groups. Uh, the, the process was led by our Chamber of Commerce and the Economic Development Corporation. And there was participation by a lot of stakeholders, a lot of community leaders, Planning and Zoning Commission, past mayors and council members. Uh, many people in this room participated in the development of this vision for the city's future. Let's just go over these. The first goal, quality, community, development, and revitalization. This is, this is uh, part of what happened with our downtown planning, our planning for uh, revitalization of the downtown area. Those things were driven by this vision that was created back in 2007. Number two, preserving, enhancing, and leveraging partnership with Fort Hood. Uh, we just entered into a second five-year term on sustainability with Fort Hood. Uh, we do a lot of things with Fort Hood uh, where we consider ourselves partners with them. Third goal, safety and security. We certainly concern to improve our firefighting capability and to decrease our crime rate. And as I'll show you in a bit, we've achieved both of those. The fourth goal, financial stability. The council determined quite a few years ago that we should maintain a fund balance of at least 22 to 25 percent. And as you'll see, we, we're financially strong. Uh, we have kept that commitment to goal number four. Goal number five, improved, efficient, and effective transportation. Uh, you can't drive around clean very far without running into construction. That's something that's been going on for quite a few years. Uh, about four years ago, the council decided uh, to issue a huge bond issue and raise taxes four cents. Uh, that was a strong move, but without that, we would not have the construction on Stagecoach, uh, the, the uh, Cunningham, Cunningham Road project, and many other road projects that we have finished. Uh, goal six, to preserve and promote a positive city image. Certainly, it was our goal that everyone should be proud of the city in which they live. And uh, we, we've taken efforts uh, to do that these, these goals in Vision 2030 uh, are, are related to every single thing in the budget. Everything the city does, they take into account Vision 2030. Number seven, foster a sense of community and provide an exceptional quality of life. Certainly one of the things that we scored poorly on in BRAC in 2005 was some of these things pertaining to quality of life for soldiers. So that was one of the reasons for the commitment in this vision 2030 adopted in 2007 was to improve the quality of life for our citizens. Goal number eight, targeted economic development. Trying to figure out what we need for our city to make it a better place and providing incentives for those kind of industries to come to our town. Goal number nine, quality educational opportunities. Uh, the, uh, the, uh, the Texas A&M University Central Texas campus uh, it's got two buildings built now. Uh, one of the first things I did as mayor was help dedicate the first building. Soon the second building will be completed. And we continue to devote our efforts to influence the legislature to issue tuition revenue bonds for that third building. Goal number nine, I'm sorry, goal number 10, sound infrastructure. Uh, we continue to adopt a, a transportation plan. Uh, we continue to adopt a water and sewer master plan as you'll see uh, later on in this briefing, 
that we're very concerned with uh, sound infrastructure to accommodate the growth uh, that we've seen in Colleen. Colleen grew by 47% in population between 2000 and 2010. So we have to plan for that. Goal number 11, recruiting and maintaining a talented committee workforce for the city. As you'll see when we talk about plans in the future, we are in the process of having a pay plan uh, for our city. We don't want to be a city in which we train good employees who leave and go to other cities. We need to have a competitive pay structure, and we uh, committed to uh, uh, that study some time ago. We'll soon get the results. In fact, I think we're going to be briefed on that very near future. Uh, goal number 12, local and central Texas regional leadership. Uh, we are striving at every effort through the Texas Municipal League and other regional organizations such as the Central Texas Council of Governments and the Texas Department of Transportation's uh, Clean Temple Metropolitan Planning Organization to have effective leadership. I currently serve as the Vice Chairman of the Clean Temple Metropolitan Planning Organization. Uh, the leadership team directly in front of mine was led by Scott Cosper, who was the Chairman. If we look at, at where Colleen is as far as our finances, I want to assure you that we are in a financially strong position. Uh, the budget that was developed for fiscal year 2013-2014 was done so based upon reasonable, low-sided projections on revenue and high-sided projections on the expenditures. We looked carefully at what we could afford. We looked at what might possibly happen given the uncertainties of Fort Hood. And we decided we would pass a conservative budget and then look at it again in the spring of 2014 to see whether or not there was room to take on additional projects. And we did take on some additional projects at that time, which I'll talk about in a moment. The council, several years ago, before I got on the council, uh, adopted a, a uh, goal of maintaining a fund balance between 22 and 25 percent. The general theory is that they wanted to maintain at least enough reserves to accommodate the city for a three-month period of time. So th theoretically, if you take 25 percent of the annual expenditures, maintain that in, in a reserve fund is a fund balance. Uh, throughout the period of time that I've been mayor, our fund balance has been above 25 percent. In fact, at times it's been as high as 31 percent. But we're in a, in a position where I assure you that the finances of the city are strong. We, in the city charter, the city charter change that was adopted by the voters a year ago, uh, the uh, internal auditor was placed under the city council. That is something that most cities have and we now have. We formed an audit committee and several council members served on the audit committee which meets quarterly with our internal auditor and goes over plans for auditing various parts of the internal structure of the city. Looking for problems and doing some sort of uh, required annual audits such as for example the federal seizure fund. Uh, we also have an external audit that is done every year. It has done, been done every year for decades and will continue to be done. It's a requirement of our bond issuances and many other uh, regulatory requirements. So we have had an external audit. The last few years it's been done by the Weaver accounting firm. Uh, since we've instituted the internal auditor under the city council, the number of complaints to our waste, fraud, and abuse hotline has increased by 200%. Uh, that shows that, that people will respond better in a situation where the internal auditor is directly under the council instead of under the rest of the city government. We've invested dramatically in capital projects over the years. Many of the projects that are underway now or were completed during the last two years as I said before, were planned, paid for, with the courage of prior councils who have uh, you know, really bitten the bullet in terms of uh, approving bond issuances and building roads that needed to be built. Uh, the transportation projects uh, that are currently underway, naturally the US-190 project, uh, that has been funded in part by the City of Colleen, but mostly by the Texas Department of Transportation. The Rosewood overpass, uh, that's kind of a, bothersome for people traversing uh, Highway 190 now, but 
when that has been completed, uh, there will be a road that will go north-south from 2410 all the way to Chaparral when it's done. That will be a very important north-south right, uh, north uh, north-south route through the city of Colleen. Um, it will also be a gateway to the Las Cascada development that is uh, projected to be built on the west side of the old Skylark field. Um, when we're looking at, uh, at, at Stagecoach, uh, it's completed between the Hargreit city limits and East Tremere, but it'll be under construction from that point to Highway 195 for years to come. Total of $17.4 million in construction along that route, uh, separated into two phases. And the phase that's being built now is $5.4 million, but there's a $12 million phase that will be constructed uh, from, uh, from 195 uh, to, to finish that project. Uh, the transportation building is brand new. It had its grand opening uh, a week or so ago, and uh, that has some, uh, some nice toys in it that allow the traffic engineers to be able to better control uh, traffic. Right now it's limited to four intersections as far as their ability to make on-the-spot control changes. But uh, every year we're going to add uh, new cameras and new infrastructure into that budget that will expand that ability. In the area of water and sewer, uh, the council decided uh, fairly recently to go ahead with funding a water treatment plant. Uh, prior to that decision, we were getting 32 million gallons per day of treated water from the Lake Belton plant operated by the Water Control and Improvement District. Many years ago, dating back to the 50s, our city fathers decided that the Water Control and Improvement District number one would treat our sewage and treat the raw water in Lake Belton to provide that uh, to us uh, and Fort Hood at that time. Um, the uh, the amount of, of water that uh, could be treated out of that plant was limited, and they could not increase the capacity of that plant. So with our 32 million gallons per day, we were facing several restrictions and regulatory requirements from the Texas Commission on Environmental Quality. One is if on the, on the hottest days in the summer where we had the most demand for water, if that exceeded 85% of our capacity for three days, then we were in a situation where we would have to start planning for a new plant. Also, the other limitation that was more serious for us, um, because of, of the number of connections we had, uh, we could only have a, a few thousand more connections as far as new homes or new apartments or those kind of things, or we'd also be in the, in the same problem. But typically it takes four or five years to build a water treatment plant, so we needed some sort of extra water during that period of time that the plant's being uh, built. So we had three real alternatives as far as a new water treatment plant. Uh, we could continue to deal with water control improvement district number one. And we had a contract with them that said we would only buy our water from them. So if we, if we broke that contract, uh, we could be facing lawsuits. Um, and if people were going to deal with us in selling us water, they could face lawsuits from Water Control and Improvement District Number One. So we had some legal issues. But even looking at the merits of each plan dealing with the Water Control Improvement District or dealing with Kempner Water Supply or Central Texas Water Supply, uh, it was fairly clear what the best alternative was. In dealing with uh, water Control and Improvement District Number One, their rates were going to continue to be 62 cents per thousand gallons. City Clean buys our water from WCID Number One, and then we sell it to our customers. The Central Texas Water Supply would charge us 69 cents per thousand gallons, and Kinder Water Supply would charge us 75 cents. So, looking at that seemed like the scales were tipped in favor of WCID number one. When we looked at the debt service, if we paid $5 million down, and the cost was going to be about 30, uh, about 30 million, 29.6 million for uh, WCID number one for a regional plant, and we would be sharing in that. And by us sharing in that plant, 
It would allow Harker Heights and several other entities to be able to participate in that regional plan to satisfy the entire region's needs for additional water treatment. Um, and that was, uh, but, but at any rate, Water Control and Improvement District number one would issue the remaining $25 million in bonds. So it wouldn't be on our balance sheet. And uh, that was very attractive to us as well. And, and another very important factor, WCID number one would give us 2 million gallons additional per day in excess of our 32 million gallons. And we would pay on what we used of that, if any, 62 cents per thousand, the same rate as we were paying on the other water. Whereas Central Texas would give us up to 2 million gallons and we would have to have to pay for all of it, whether or not we used it or not, at the rate of $2.62 per thousand gallons. And uh, Kempner Water Supply would give us a million and a half, and once again, we'd have to pay for all of it, whether or not we used a gallon, at the rate of $2.60 per thousand gallons. So it was pretty clear to the council, and that's why I believe we voted unanimously to approve the contract with WCID number one on that project. Um, another project that we uh, did fairly recently was decide on water reuse. Right now, the affluent that is, comes out of our sewage treatment plants is dumped into Nolan Creek on the 38th Street plant. And the affluent from our south uh, wastewater treatment plant is force pumped back up over the hill back down to Nolan Creek. And that affluent gets mixed with the water in Nolan Creek, and, and uh, it, it's nearly pure. It's not drinkable, it's not potable water, but it's, it's, it's very close to pure. Well, we think it's a good idea to use that to water our golf course and to see if we can seek other commercial clients to buy that water from us. Uh, it's good for conservation, it's good for the environment, and it also will satisfy some of our future water needs. Uh, right now we have 39,000 acre feet of water um, and uh, that's what's out in Lake Belton or uh, 10 million gallons of that in, in Stillhouse. But it's, it's part of the system water of the Brazos River Authority. It's allocated to WCID number one who holds those water rights in the name of the city of Colleen. Um, and we're, we're in a situation where it's unlikely uh, that we're going to get more water in the, in, the, in the near future. There's a lot of competition for water and it takes like 40 years to build an additional reservoir. Uh, so when you're looking at where are we going to get the additional water from in the future, we need to think about two things. We need to think about conserving the amount of water we use and we need to think about reusing the affluent. Possibly doing like many countries do that's put it right back into the water treatment plant where we take our affluent and put it right back into the treatment. Um, and that goes on throughout many places in the world. Um, it's going to cost about a million dollars for that water reuse project and, uh, and we've authorized uh, Water Control Improvement District number one to go ahead with that project. Uh, another thing the council has done fairly recently uh, looking toward the future is we've authorized the issuance of $20 million in bonds, um, mainly for parks, the, the community center renovation, um, for Tremere Road uh, to get rid of some of the congestion there, and for fire station number nine. You know, basically what we're looking at in the area of roads is if you look at Tremere from Jasper Drive uh, going south all the way to the high school, Elson High School, that road is very congested. And most of it consists of four lanes, uh, two in each direction with no center turn lane. And for those of you who are going to HEB and Walmart, which is thousands of people every day, uh, that, that congestion needs to be fixed. And uh, so it's, it's important that, that we look at that. We, uh, over a year ago, authorized an engineering firm to design that. Uh, and their design is just about complete. I think within another few weeks we'll be getting that, uh, that uh, engineering report from them. Where it'll be uh, time to, to go ahead and start looking at uh, putting that out for bid. Uh, we think it's going to cost about $8.4 million to fix that road. 
Another, another road that needs to be fixed, which is very dangerous, when you're driving on W.S. Young from the area of Lowe's to the area of the Civic and Conference Center, uh, most of that road is five lanes for the center turn lane. Except up by the National Guard Armory, there's just two lanes in each direction. And when you come up on somebody who's getting ready to turn left, uh, it's a dangerous situation. There's been many accidents, and it's going to cost about a million dollars to fix that, that section. For those who live in the southwestern part of Colleen, there's no fire station down there, but there, we are in the, we have plans to build fire station number nine, and to build that and to equip it, uh, you're looking at about eight million dollars. We hope that we can shave some of that off so we'll have more money to use for parks, um, but that's where the rest of the money is going to renovate the community center. The community center is in desperate need of getting fixed. Uh, we're also looking at uh, getting a grant from Texas Department of Transportation to assist with another hike and bike trail, the, the West Side Trail Extension. Um, and that could be as much as $2.1 million uh, to, to get that in. And that, we think, will leave us with over $3 million to put in park improvements. And we're going to concentrate on the north side. Uh, and the uh, south side. We're also looking at uh, doing some work on the Gilmore Center and having some money left over for, addition, for some badly needed park maintenance. Um, let's look for a moment at something that I'm, I'm real proud of, and that's, that's our water rates in the city of Colleen. When you look at uh, how much it costs for 10,000 gallons per day and look at other area cities, you'll note that the lowest rate is that charged by Temple at $35.60. The second lowest is the city of Clean at $36.03 for 10,000 gallons. And if you look at how Round Rock, Belton, Georgetown, Harper Heights, Coppers Cove, Cedar Park, all higher than us, Pflugerville at 57, Austin at $64.30, Hutto $91, Leander, $105. You'll see that we have very competitive rate for water. Uh, and that's in a, that's in a system uh, that has been uh, where we've had to spend a lot of money and issue a lot of bonds. Typically, every three years, we're issuing about $20 million in bonds to accommodate the extension of water and sewer services. Uh, and the rate payers, as you can see, are able to uh, to still have very low rates, even with all that dramatic growth. That's a tribute to the hard work and planning that the city has done. Now let's look at some of our success, successful initiatives. And, I, and I, by, by, when I'm saying successful initiatives, let me make it clear, I'm not talking about something that this council did over the last two years. Because, for example, the first one, downtown revitalization, uh, that was part of Vision 2030 in 2007. That's something that people have been working on for years. Um, when the city council decided, I think in 2010, to uh, accept a grant, put up about two and a half million of their own money and get a little over two and a half million from TxDOT uh, to do the extension of the Andy K. Wells Hike and Bike Trail from the W.S. Sloan location down to the downtown area and then use that rest of that money on tearing up Avenue C and Avenue D uh, in that historic district. Uh, that, that was a good move. They were criticized for that at the time. It would never